uh, no clutch, no gear uh, selector. Those of you who aren't familiar with a DC, DCT is, it stands for dual clutch transmission. And uh, essentially it has uh, several modes, just like a regular car automatic. It's just for you, like I have it in now in tour. Um, and uh, of course I've only been on it now, maybe a quarter of a mile, but it's just really smooth and, and th stuff like that. So um, things just shift really fast because it's in tour, probably for better fuel economy. Um, I'm not exactly sure on the weight of this. Uh, some of the specs on it I'm a little foggy on. Um, so this is just kind of a first ride review more than a, a spec ride review. So uh, the one I'm riding uh, is the DCT model, and it is also the bagger version, meaning it is the one without the top case. It looks more kind of, you know, um, street glass, so to speak. The windshield is bobbed. It's real short. The touring one is much higher, like somewhere up here, at least double the size probably. Um, but uh, so far, it, it seems pretty well. The bike's kind of a – it would be hard to pick it up in the GoPro, but you'll see it on the thumbnail when I create it in video. But it's kind of a bronze uh, – brown metallic it's a uh, it's kind of a different color um but yamaha i mean pfft, sorry not yamaha honda did some major uh, uh, updates on this it has a new front wishbone suspension that's supposed to uh make the rider and uh passenger more enjoyable ride as far as the way it soaks up bumps and stuff like that and they did that to shift ever to give the rider and the passenger compartment more room uh so that way um the front wheel is almost vertical up and down as far as the travel. There's no really rake to the fork because there is no fork. Um, it's a double wishbone, similar to a car. And if you kind of look down there, I can actually see the wheel and some of the some of the upper attachment points to it. Uh, but the riding position is quite comfortable. Your arms are bent quite a bit, almost like a cruiser style, where the bars are wide and give you lots of leverage for slow speed stability. Um, the Oh, sorry. Oh, God. Oh, my Lord, the brakes. Good grief. Oh, that stood me on my nose there. I don't want to run it on a bike I'm not familiar with. Uh, so, um, who's this bike really for? This bike is really for the touring person in mind, uh, the person who really wants to put some distance on one. Although the one I'm riding with a shorter windshield is probably not the best for flat out, you know, that of you know hundreds of miles a day several hours in the saddle of course you can fix that with an aftermarket windshield from uh, Honda you could probably I don't know you can probably even uh, fit the Turing model there that way it's a direct fit and everything on the electronic windshield works well uh, I'm not gonna play with any of the radio and stuff like that like I said this is just a first rider review and I'm stuck in uh, rush hour traffic here where I live in east part of Tennessee and I'm baking in the Sun because it's like 85 degrees outside um, some of the instrumentation on the bike is kind of weird, like why don't I see a outside temperature reading? I'm sure I can toggle through and see it, but why is that not something that you can't turn off and on? I don't know. Um, but the speedometer, the digits are pretty small, um, just what a little bit I wrote it. You have to really kind of look at how fast you're going. Uh, I think they probably could have done a little better job of that, especially since I have this ginormous nav screen in front of me in the middle. So. But, uh, you know, the bike feels kind of weird. Um, we'll see. We'll, I, I'm, so, I'm so tempted, like, just there to um, hit the throttle, kind of blip the throttle with the clutch because I've seen those people go, and I thought it was my turn, but it's DCT, so there's there's no clutch. Very weird. But it, it's almost immediate, even in tour mode, like, just a little bit of throttle, and it rolls, and then it catches itself and keeps it rolling back. So, all right, now that we're out of traffic. See, bike's shifting really quick, you know, 35 miles an hour in fifth gear already. And the DCT, unlike traditional motorcycles, is a seven speed instead of just a six speed. Sorry, I have to look down to find the turn signal. There's a lot of buttons on this bike and I'm not familiar with it. Um, I'm pretty sure too, don't quote me on this, I'm pretty sure when you change the mode, so to speak, I don't think there's really any uh, electronic suspension adjustment. I think you just get what you get. Um, as far as like, you know, whether the bike probably has sensors, I guess, maybe. I don't know, don't hate me in the comments for this, going uh, faithfuls. Um, but um, I'm guessing it has put the windshield up, see what it actually does, a little bobble shield. Oh, that, that actually helps quite a bit, actually. Um, I'm still getting some air uh, to my torso area, some of my arms. Uh, I do feel some, uh, definitely uh, some head buffeting here, especially if I'm only doing 45 miles an hour or so. Put it down a little bit because I'm roasting. Um, anyways. But, you know, doing almost 50 miles an hour here, the bike seems real compliant. 
Uh, it feels fairly nimble for a bike it is. I know, uh, you know, this is a total redesign from this bike from the ground up. You know, all LED lights, um, like I said, the wishbone suspension, the motors changed. They dropped uh, a gallon of gas, a uh, smaller fuel tank. But Honda does say that um, they have made this bike 20% more efficient. So even though it has a smaller gas tank at one gallon, it will still go uh, the same mileage and range as the old bike, at least. Um, so... I think I have to merge here. This is wonderful road construction with a bike I've never run. Oh well, whatever. But like I said, uh, the throttle it is it's really kind of, the fueling's good, but it's real snatchy. Um, you know, I know this is a um, uh, 1600, you know, uh, inline or flat six, I believe it's a flat six, sorry. Go wing guys, once again. Um, kind of like a boxer motor where it makes it wear its weight low. Um, oh Lord. Groove pavement. Sorry, guys. Got to concentrate here. Oh, Lord. Anyways, um, but, uh, you know, I know that's what it is. It's meant to have a lot of power, so to speak. Like, tour there, it's pretty soft as far as a roll-on. But it, it seems to pick up pretty well for, you know, like tour, you want that for, you know, riding two up where your passenger and you aren't, uh, you know, slapping helmets so much when you roll on and off. The off's kind of bleh, and there's not, I don't know. It really wants to downshift. I don't know, it seems like quick. And uh, the engine braking is kind of dull, so the transmission takes uh, takes some of that away from you. That way you actually get some engine braking like a traditional motorcycle with a clutch and a regular transmission. What are these people doing? Good Lord. Sorry, guys. Uh, hard to do a view and a bunch of traffic and a bunch of morons. So um, my overall impression of the bike isn't worth, you know, the... I think this bike I'm riding where it's the kind of more stripped down version. I think it retails for like 22, 23 grand. Is it worth that? Mm, I don't know. You know, that's something everybody will have to answer for themselves. But I buy one. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't feel like a lot of my low subscribers know. It doesn't feel anything like an FJR, obviously. Whoa, God, man, you're scaring the crap out of me. Um, but it, it's, it doesn't feel anything like an FJR. Uh, it's happy, you know, to really cruise and really eat up some miles, like 50 miles an hour feel, feels well. More groove payment, really, people. Um, so, um, you know, it rides well, but it's in a different class now, I think, where they shed so much weight off it. It's more on the sport touring side, more than it's in the touring side. I think it's now somewhere in the middle. And it's in a good uh, thing for its class as far as it leaves you lots of options out there. Um, you know, but the, the bike feels wonderful. Uh, the power's good. You know, turn mode. See, twists the wrist a little bit. It downshifted two gears there instead of from seventh. Uh, and, it, you know, that was about half throttle. And it, it quite moved just to be in tour mode. So, uh, we'll see. But we're going to make a loop back to the dealer. I keep grabbing from the clutch. It's very weird. Uh, I probably chose poorly a bad place to turn around here. Oops. Oh, well. Uh, but, you know, like I said... It's, it's really strange, too, because the bike doesn't even want to roll back. See how it does in a UE here with nobody around me. Turn radius. Uh, it's pretty good, but it's not wonderful. Of course, I'm not used to it either, so. But, yeah, it, in turn mode, it uh, really shifts up smooth and just nice, steady, you know, rush of power, a little bit off idle, and just really cruise. But, man, at 55 miles an hour, it's uh, it, it, all the road imperfections like this road I'm on is not perfect. I don't feel anything really in the foot pegs. I feel a little bit in the bars as far as, you know, the different uh, transitions of the road and stuff and some bumps and stuff. But, man, I hit a big bump back there, almost like a pothole, and it just kind of, it was kind of floaty. It soaked it up without being floaty, if that makes sense. Somewhere in the middle. It's definitely comfortable, don't get me wrong. Uh, but is it real floaty like some of maybe your bigger uh, baggers and some heavier bikes? Nah, not really. But like I said, uh, this is a total redesign of this. Um, Honda shed over a hundred, right at a hundred pounds off this bike. Um, so, um, seems like they did their homework. The bar position is kind of weird. Like I said, my elbows are bent and it feels like that they're, I don't know, kind of like plucking like a chicken. That's the only way I to describe it. Uh, but the, the foot peg position is very nice. Uh, though there's no floorboards on this one, at least. I'm sure you could maybe put some on it though. I don't know. But the floorboard position is nice. It's straight down where you'd want to put your leg. Your, my leg is like 90 degrees like this. There's no back back behind me like uh, 
more of a standard or more sporty bike, so to speak. So your legs would be very comfortable, that's for sure. Uh, the seat has a little thing, kind of like a cruiser seat, where it cups the little bit of your lumbar of your back, and uh, it's pretty nice. Uh, it does feel decent for a stock seat. I, I'm sure, you know, all your touring fans out there are going to put your favorite brand of seat on it. That's, that's not a big issue. Just like the windshield. Um, but uh, it's kind of strange, too, because going down this road, these two little things sticking up where it's part of the double wishbone, you can see it working. <laughs> that's weird. Uh, you know, where it's soaking all up, but you hardly feel any of that to the bars. You just kind of feel what the tire uh, difference is. You don't feel that at all. Um, pretty nice. The back, I'm sure, is doing the same thing, but obviously I can't see it. Uh, the mirrors are quite excellent. Uh, I can barely see just a little bit of my hands, kind of like a street glide mirror where they're down kind of low, and like the BMW RT is. Uh, the mirrors are down low. Uh, they're adjusted pretty good. They could be a little farther out, but they're a big mirror and uh, really seem to be able to see like if you move your head around like that, you can see around you a little bit over uh, more towards the shoulder of the road. Uh, but it's a pretty nice bike, I will admit. Um, Honda's definitely done a good job. These brakes are so touchy, though. Golly. It's like I'm hitting the brakes and the transmission's trying to downshift, so it's kind of, it's smooth, but it's different. Like, I'm two-finger braking, and of course I'm hitting the rear, too, but it's so just, ugh. Like, it really, golly. If this bike did not have ABS, it would flat lock up our front tire in a hurry. Ugh. Of course, it does have ABS, traction control, you know, all the new updates it did to it. I'm sure it has some, ooh, that's kind of weird. I tried to roll forward. This little glove box thing, I don't know how to open that, but it actually does have a parking brake down here by my left hand because it's like, you know, it never goes in gear. It just stays, court, you know, it's got a neutral when you cut it off, but that's it. Uh, it is keyless, too. There's a little fob in one of the side cubbies here in front of my uh, shins, so it is keyless, so you put that little, uh, fob in your pocket and go on so that's kind of neat uh, that's a convenient thing uh, that's kind of carried over from the car world I know my last vehicle that's what it had you just keep your key in your front pocket get in your car and I uh, hit start button so you know that, that's nice when you're touring because you can just leave it in your pocket you know I'm sure you can unlock and lock the bags with the bike or with a fob somehow uh, bike does have a cruise of course it's a gold wing uh, link brakes it also has of course because most touring bikes and sport turn bikes you usually have link brakes for the most part. Some are set up a little different way than others, like the FJR uh, with the rear brake only, only brakes uh, like a quarter of the front brake, so that way you can do actually some drag brake stuff. But it does not cut on or cut off uh, on some of the bikes. Some it does, some it doesn't. It just depends on the bike. So, what are my other impressions about the bike? Uh, you know, I'm five foot ten inches. Five foot, 10 inches tall with a 32 inch in steam. And surprisingly, the seat height to me um, is kind of tall. I was, uh, I really had to stretch my legs out, uh, my knees, you know, to really flat foot it. I couldn't just touch flat foot with, uh, with my knees bent. You know, I really had to reach to touch uh, my, all my foot, just touching down, you know, I'm um, at least half foot, maybe a little bit more on that. So that way I cover the reach thing that everybody wants to know. What the seat height is, <laughs> sorry guys, once again, I really don't know. I didn't do too good a homework on this test ride. It's just kind of a spur of the moment thing. But um, and the bike feels fantastic though. I, I, I'm pretty impressed, you know. I've done some city stuff like back there. What is this more on this Ford truck doing? Sorry guys. Um, like the brakes though, golly, they're outstanding. Like they will flat, just stop in a hurry. Um, there would be no problem as far as a quick turning red light that would just turn red on you at the last minute to be able to stop that's for sure um nav screen looks good um all the pixels on it look really clean it almost looks like a, a new modern day tablet you know it's not pixelated uh color saturation is really good as far as be able what to tell like you can see some green on there maybe on the gopro and over here let's say it's a park it's kind of like a you know a garmin stuff has uh it shows where i'm at you know you can scale it in back i'm sure um, I'm not going to play the radio because I don't want to get copyright. And that's not what this is about. This is about the first impression of the bike. But I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, I don't know that it'll definitely go on my choose a pick when I do get a new touring bike in the near future. But it definitely is pretty pretty good. I'm, uh, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, if any of y'all want to go check one of these out, go, maybe 
go to your local dealer, see if they'll let you test drive one. If not, try to find a Honda Demo Day. I know uh, Japanese brand motorcycles are very picky about even having a demo bike, much less let somebody take one for a test ride. But my local dealer here in Tri-Cities area of East Tennessee actually had one for a demo. Uh, a good buddy of mine that um, is a subscriber and uh, of mine, and I watch his channel, and we rode together. He, uh, he told me about it. He said, yeah, they've got one. Go check it out. So I was like, oh, okay, sweet. So here I am. I'm always uh, interested to test ride a different kind of bike just to get the different experience, what the bike's going to feel like, what's the pros, what's the cons. Um, you never know. You may ride a, ride a bike out there you think you're going to absolutely hate and you love it. So there we go. That's weird. It's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> no clutch. But it, it will move. You know, there's, yeah, that's in turn mode, not even sport. It's got sport, uh, sport, eco, rain, and tour i think I, something like that sorry guys once again this is kind of hard to do this review and all this traffic uh but uh if you haven't already done so please uh leave a comment down below uh subscribe if you haven't already done that also uh leave uh if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and share it uh helps my channel out a lot on that we'll see you guys on the next one see ya